everybody. It's Monday. We had another long night last night at CBS 46 uh, with more storms in the forecast. I uh, hope everyone slept well last night. I think really the biggest thing was the thunder and lightning. I know I came home, uh, it was about three in the morning that I got home after the storms had passed. There were still some thunderstorms, but no severe threat. And I had a little body in my bed. I had a little person in my bed who didn't like the thunder and lightning. So um, maybe a lot of you had visitors last night because it was pretty loud. Uh, luckily, we really did well as far as the severe weather goes. No tornadoes at all over our area. We didn't even have a severe thunderstorm warning. So we had a couple trees down. That's just because we had so much rain. We had a lot of flooding in middle and south Georgia. But we looked pretty good across North Georgia. So overall, things fared pretty well considering. And again, this is severe weather season. So uh, this is normal in March and April. And I think we forget bad stuff in our heads when things we don't like happen, we kind of forget about it. So um, even my husband was asking, wow, this April, I don't remember this much severe weather. And I mean, this is when it happens this time of year. So I think we kind of forget um, that this is our severe weather season. So we are talking today not about severe weather, but we're talking about hurricanes and we are going in depth in hurricanes. So we've been devoting an entire week to hurricanes, um, hurricane names, hurricane strengths, uh, where hurricanes form, what they're called, depending on where they form. Uh, we talked about El Nino and La Nina. We talked about that. Um, so we've been talking about all kinds of things related to hurricanes. So we are going to talk about um, let me see what this is right here. Let's see. I'm trying to get the very latest on what we're, um, we are talking about, let me get my pen. I have 8,000 things on my desk. So, um, okay. So we are talking about hurricanes, but everything maybe we didn't answer in previous lessons. And actually we have a hurricane forecast for 2020. So uh, Colorado State University, they're a big uh, university that really devotes a lot of time and research into hurricanes. They have released their hurricane outlook. So we're going to talk about that, what the prediction is from Colorado State University. We can talk about what we saw last year as well. We did that yesterday and compare what that means for our hurricane season. But quick recap, where's my globe? My globe is behind me. I may go and get it. Okay. Quick recap, again, you need warm ocean water for hurricanes. It needs to be at least 79 degrees, top 50 meters of the ocean. Secondly, you need light winds. If you have strong winds blowing over the Atlantic, you're not gonna get the hurricane to develop. You also need an area of low pressure. We get areas of low pressure all the time. So we do find those throughout the ocean, but if the water's not warm enough, if the winds aren't light enough, you're not going to get a hurricane to develop. Once you have a hurricane, a hurricane is 74 mile an hour winds or stronger. That's when it's officially a hurricane. That's when we start to track these. Well, with a tropical storm, we track them as well. That's 39 miles an hour or higher. Uh, and then we track them coming onto land. What we're going to talk more about today is the quadrants. So let's say you have a perfect circle because again, a hurricane is a circle and you, you divide it into four pieces. Almost like if you have a piece of bread or a sandwich, like a grilled cheese sandwich or a really good peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and your mom and dad, they cut it in half and then they cut it again, you have four squares. So a hurricane is a circle, it's not a square, but it's similar concept. It's like someone got a knife and cut it into four sections. And as meteorologists, we look down on top of the hurricane and we label those four sections. We have the front right quadrant, which is the top right side. We have the front left quadrant, which is the top left side. Then we have the rear left quadrant, and the rear right quadrant. So those are the four quadrants. This may not make sense right now. I'm gonna show you a really good image that's gonna help explain. And then we're gonna talk about what we see in these quadrants. As always, I have you up right here on my iPad. So if you have questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer any questions. See everyone who's watching. Hi, Bob. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Edson. Hi, Butch. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching. Okay, so let's flip this camera around. We're gonna learn about hurricanes today. And I've actually been getting my lessons ready for the rest of the week. I have really good stuff coming up this week. Uh, one of my favorite lessons, we're gonna be talking about thunder and lightning. Uh, I know that's been a big topic of conversation lately because we've had so much. So that's coming up this week. Uh, we have a lot of really good lessons. So make sure you keep watching this week. So let me flip this over. Hurricanes, 
We are talking about the four quadrants. We are talking about everything we have not covered. And we're going to do a couple refreshers as well. We may cover some stuff that maybe we've already touched on, but it doesn't hurt to uh, talk about it again. So uh, never hurts to talk about things too often. Then it's really going to be ingrained in your bread. So in your head, not your bread, your head. You can tell I didn't sleep much last night. Okay, so hurricane season, this is a little bit of a recap. But again, you need that ocean water to be 79 degrees or warmer. So that is why our hurricane season is when it is. And this is the Atlantic hurricane season. When you look at the hurricane season around the world, it is different months depending on where they are located. Here in the Atlantic, it starts June 1st and continues through November 30th. So June 1st, November 30th. And this line is the number of storms. So you can see June, July, that's when we get the storms forming in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. We see some storms, but we don't see very many. The peak for us from August 1st to the end of August, it's almost like a roller coaster going up. I mean, it is a huge, huge, huge incline in the number of storms from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. The peak of hurricane season is September but specifically, it is September 11th. That is the peak of our hurricane season. And then as temperatures in the ocean start to get cooler, notice the hurricane season goes down. Now, can you see a hurricane out of hurricane season? And we've done this before, so I think you guys know this if you've been watching our lessons. Can you see a hurricane out of hurricane season? I'm looking for responses. And the answer is yes. In fact, over the past five years, we have had our A storm form before the hurricane season even started. So it is possible to have hurricanes out of hurricane season. But again, this is the peak of the hurricane season when we see most against September 11th. So we talked about the quadrants, a peanut butter and jelly or a grilled cheese sandwich. And you're going to cut it in four sections. We always talk about the right front quadrant. That is the top right quadrant. And that is the strongest part of the hurricane. That's really where you get the worst, the worst, the worst of it all. A big reason for that is because the storm is traveling uh, in that direction. So say landfall is right here, right where this arrow is. You have not only the actual force of the impact coming on shore, but you also have the speed of the hurricane moving forward. So let's say you have a hurricane that has 100 mile an hour winds and it's traveling north at 20 miles an hour. So it's 100 mile an hour winds. It's moving north at 20 miles an hour. That right front section of the hurricane will have winds of about 120 miles an hour. So it's really making everything worse because you have the actual speed of the hurricane moving plus the actual winds within the hurricane. This is also where you see the most tornadoes. You see the most tornadoes here in the front right quadrant. This is where you get the maximum impact. So this is very important for forecasters and meteorologists because when we're tracking a hurricane, let's say to make its landfall in Orlando, you're looking at areas south of Orlando like Miami. They're not going to get as big of an impact as areas north of Orlando like Jacksonville or like the South Georgia coast. So it's very important to know where a hurricane is making landfall, but also where you are in relation to that hurricane. Again, the front right side, everything is maximum. The winds, the rain, the tornadoes, the severe weather, the worst of it is on the front right side. Now front left side, you can have significant storm surge and really that holds true for the entire front of the hurricane the front right quadrant and the front left quadrant, you have significant storm surge. But on that left side, you're not seeing the strong winds, or at least as strong. Again, it's still a hurricane, but you don't have that additional force of the forward moving speed. So we talked about a 100 mile an hour hurricane, uh, wind hurricane moving 20 miles an hour north. It feels about 120 miles an hour on the front right side. But on the front left side, you're almost subtracting that forward speed. So it does make those winds less strong. Again, we're still talking about a hurricane, but it does uh, assist in making the winds a little less significant. You still have that storm surge though, because you still have that forward motion uh, as that storm is moving on shore. Now the back right side, 
is not as strong, but you still have significant wind. And I can't stress that enough. We're still talking about a hurricane here. So yes, it's not as powerful, but you still have significant winds, especially with that forward speed. Because again, even though you're on the back right side, you're still on the right side. So because of the counterclockwise rotation here of the storm and because it's moving forward, you're still getting significant winds, although not as significant as the front right side. The front or the back left, that is the weakest of all four quadrants, but it is still dangerous. It's still a hurricane, but it, you would want to be on the back left side as opposed to the front right side. There really is a significant difference, especially when you're looking at winds, tornado threat, storm surge. It is the best place to be in a hurricane, but no place in the hurricane is the best place to be. So those are the different quadrants. We've talked about the winds. Again, this is a refresher for those of you who maybe missed a lesson. And again, hurricane winds, uh, anything above 74 miles an hour, that's a category one hurricane. Category two, anything above 96. Once you're at category three or stronger, that is when you have a major hurricane. So category three or stronger, that is a major hurricane. That's when you get the most significant damage. Uh, and we've had several category three or higher hurricanes recently and chances are we will see more as we head into this season this is the names for the year we've been talking about this as well i think a lot of people interested in the names because they wonder where they come from they wonder um or they find one that we've had before and again these are the names that uh are on a six year cycle so the american meteorological society they come up with these names Every six years, you're going to go through these names once again. And if a storm is significant, they remove it from the list. So you're going to recognize a couple of these names like Faye, um, like Dolly, some of these names, but some are new to you because they're names that were retired. You're also going to notice this is 21 names. Not every letter in the alphabet is in there. Q, U, X, Y, Z, not in there every year. And that is, again, because it's just... There's not a lot of Q, U, X, Y, and Z names. If we ever get past this list, past the 21 list, it's rare, but it's happened, we get names from the Greek alphabet. So alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and we go through the Greek alphabet. Now, even years, so this is 2020. It is an even year. Then men names are the odd numbered storms. So the first, the third, the fifth, and so on and so forth are man names. And then the even names are females. Bertha, Dolly, Faye, the second, fourth, sixth. On odd years, so next year in 2021, women will go first. So it is interesting that even when we're talking about hurricanes and tropical systems, um, we're very politically correct and everyone has their turn going first. Uh, something interesting is they did not add men's names to the list until 1979 before that it was always all female names so this process is always developing and evolving as times change but this is what we're doing now every six years again the names change they are retired when they cause significant damage so here is that list i was telling you about this is a uh, released this is from colorado state university uh the National Hurricane Center, they released their list as well. They have not done it yet. There's a lot of things they look at. They look at El Nino. They look at La Nina. They look at uh, ocean temperatures. Uh, they look at, um, you know, the winds, the shear expected over the ocean. So they look at a lot of things to come up with these forecasts. And again, El Nino, we have less hurricane activity in the Atlantic, but there's more in the Eastern Pacific. And mainly that's because we have more wind shear which prevents these hurricanes from developing. And during a La Nina year, we actually have more hurricanes develop. Uh, we are going to be in a neutral pattern for this hurricane season, which means it's neither El Nino or La Nina. It's going to be more of a neutral pattern. But we are going to look at 2019. I think that was a big factor in coming up with this hurricane season because last year we were also in a neutral pattern starting in July but we had an above average named uh, number of named storms. So this is the prediction. Again, Colorado State University, this is their prediction. Normally we get 12 named storms. We'll get about 16 is what they are predicting, and this is just a prediction. Hurricanes, six, they're predicting six. Major hurricanes, three is normal, and they are predicting four. So overall, they are predicting a slightly above average year. 
uh, keep in mind, even though they're predicting 16, it does not mean 16 are moving on shore. Uh, in fact, a lot of these form out in the ocean and they stay in the ocean or they don't even affect the U.S. So I know these numbers, you look at them and they look high, they look scary. Again, even the major hurricanes, it does not mean four major hurricanes making landfall. It just means four major hurricanes in the ocean. So a large chunk of these do not move on shore, but we did use this analogy on Friday. You know, the more marbles you have, or the more Nerf, uh, Nerf, uh, what are they called? Pellets, arrows, the more Nerf arrows you have in your gun, let's say you have 20, and you're shooting at a target, the more arrows you have, the higher likelihood you're gonna hit your target. So again, the more storms that we have, the higher the chance they will impact land, just because of a, it's an odds game, but it doesn't necessarily mean they will move on shore. And we have had some years where we have had a tremendous amount of storms and none of them, uh, or very few of them affected us. So uh, you have to look at these numbers, but it's not a guarantee. So here's today's trivia question. I hope everybody was listening. And is which part of the hurricane produces the most tornadoes? Front left, front right, back right, or back left? And then I see Adam. So you're on a delay on Facebook Live, but darts. Okay, good. I think I said darts, so I was right. And the part of the hurricane which produces the most tornadoes is the front right side of the hurricane. And the front right side is the worst all aspects storm surge winds tornadoes severe weather you just don't want to be on that front right side so now i am looking off to the side here because i'm seeing um if we have any questions and you guys have been so good yes bob you're right the thunder was very frightening um let's see my dad's hi jennifer hi bob Trish, you're not getting weather except when bad weather events happen. Well, luckily we didn't have any severe weather yesterday, so I don't know if it's about that. I was updating on the CBS 46 web uh, Facebook page constantly, so there were updates there. Um, but maybe you didn't get an alert because we didn't have any severe weather. We did have a flash flood watch, but we didn't have any warnings, so maybe that's why. Adam Darts, thank you. Oh, you all guessed B. Look at that. All of you got it right. Bob, Butch, Brad, Michael, Gerald, Zoe, Patricia, Tarsia. Hopefully I got that right. And Hasina, you all got it right. Awesome. So I'm so glad you guys learned. So tomorrow we're going on to our next lesson, which is, let's see, let's open it up here. It's good stuff. Uh, ooh, this one's good. Okay, so tomorrow we're learning about hail. So how hail forms, have you ever wondered what hail is and how it forms? We're talking about how it forms, the different sizes of hail, how common it is. And then we have some really awesome pictures of hail in Georgia and some of the biggest hail we've seen in Georgia. After that, we are talking lightning uh, and I have tons of stuff about lightning, not only how it forms, uh, but who's most likely to get struck by lightning, what most people are doing when they get struck by lightning, where you should go to be safe if there is lightning. So it's a really big topic, lots to cover. So we have a really fun week of planned with World of Weather. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching every day at 1.15. I love having uh, your participation and your involvement. And I really hope you're learning a lot uh, with these lessons. That's my goal. I wanna teach and help and hopefully the kids' brains are getting bigger and bigger and these little sponges are getting filled with information. And hopefully I'm sharing my love of weather. I love weather. I'm constantly fascinated by weather. Um, and I know as our kids, they're home from school and they're on their, on their iPads a lot. And I mean, that's all kids. I know my kids have watched more Netflix, more Disney Plus, and have been on their iPad more than ever. Um, but they're learning too. So hopefully this is just a little nugget we can do uh, to help their brains get bigger uh, while they're taking a lot of time away from school. Everyone have a great day. Adam, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy to do it. Have a great day. I'm going to see you tomorrow at 1.15 when we talk about hail. Everyone have a great Tuesday. See you tomorrow.